Hi, I'm Uman Haris. You are watching the MTDC Technopreneur Coffee Chat. I 4.0, Industry 4.0. What does this word mean to you? Now, if there's one concept that has been debated probably endlessly for the past few years and has invoked a lot of emotion, optimism, suspense, uh, anxiety, anger even, it's I 4.0. Now, that's where the Malaysian Technology Development Corporation comes in, MTDC to ensure that companies in Malaysia and Malaysia as a whole not only survives this so-called I 4.0 but thrives upon it. Joining me today on the coffee chat is our three guests who are real life success stories of I 4.0 and the real life examples of how you can just not just survive I 4.0 but thrive upon it of course with the help of MTDC. Please welcome as I join Mr. Faisal Ali from Grimax Holdings in Hart. Mr. Dave Chung from Linear DMS in Yuan Berhad, and last but not least, Mr. Chu Chi Seng of V Pro Groups in Yuan Berhad. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Okay, all right. Let me just start with Faisal, maybe. Um, Faisal, you have got a very interesting story with regards to your company, Grimax. Tell us a bit about your journey. You started out in San Diego in the US, uh, but you chose to come back to Malaysia. Why? Right. So uh, we started out as a, with a Kickstarter project. We were making devices, electronic devices. Uh, so apart from the personal reasons, uh, Malaysia is actually a pretty good place to make. If you are making, you know, the devices, Malaysia is actually a pretty good place. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, we have much lower cost structure. We have, we can get talent, uh, engineering talent. Uh, we have business friendly policies from the government. Uh, and, you know, MTDC invited me back and they've been really supportive. And uh, I decided that this was the place to build my next uh, journey. How has MTDC helped take your company from one level to the next? Well, I mean, the most obvious one that everybody knows about is the funding. So when you, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to get funding for tech in this region. You know, uh, investors in this region are not really used to funding in tech. Uh, so MTDC helped us with the funding. Uh, I think the, the second one is giving a voice to a small company. You know, we are a small company. Um, for us to grow, we need to reach out to the, you know, the giants of the Malaysian company. And being small, sometimes our voices get drowned out. So mm -hmm. MTDC gives us a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and mentoring, you know, most of us are, are technical people. You know, we, we are not, we are not, we did not start out as a, uh, at least for me, I did not start out as a businessman. Mm -hmm. I started out as an engineer and trying to build a business. So that's, that's a skill set that, you know, we need mentoring on. So those are the main three major things. Talking about journeys, Dave, um, Linear DMS yep. um, um, is also in an industry uh, which is considered a very pioneering industry in, in Malaysia, especially in Malaysia. Uh, you're involved in uh, IoT, E&E, and &E, r and very pillars of I4.0. When you first started out, what were the challenges to, to start, to operate, and of course to subsequently thrive within the Malaysian market? In terms of challenges, of course, uh, for a startup, there, there are lots, right? Mm. So, uh, basically, uh, my advice to all the startup is that don't give up, right? Basically, challenges will come, right? So, you have a lot of, uh, you know, you're selling your dreams, friendly speaking, as a startup, as a technopreneur, right? So, you have a lot of dreams, right? I believe, right, a lot of people, especially the Gen Y, they have a lot of dreams, all those things to, to, to sell up, right? So. One of the major uh, challenges that you, you see is that uh, when you start to sell your dreams, a lot of people say, hey, start up, you know, 90% right, you, you, you have gone down the drain. Mm. So are you still going to embark on this before they even come, in, come into your, your dreams of talking about that, right? So beside that, right, so the ecosystems, right, you have to understand the ecosystem, especially in Malaysia. So we are talking about uh, IOTs, right? four years back, right? A lot of people, do, when you talk about IoT, what's that? You know, so you're looking at future, right? So it, it, it's very, uh, I mean, challenging in, in order to, to, to sell out this, this mm. idea, right? Mm. So beside that, you are going to plan for your companies as well. Right, how are you going to sustainability? That's the most important thing. Mm. That, uh, that's, that's the point, isn't it? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you are a business as well. You guys are businesses. And, and for Linear DMS, for instance, you guys, it took you guys two years just to do research when you first started out. And the pressure for businesses, of course, it's good that you're innovating, but the pressure is also to make money at the end of the day. So for those up-and-coming 
tech entrepreneurs especially out there, how do they address this huge challenge? So they have to start the first few years just developing and researching and not make money for the first few years. Yes, that, that will involve a lot of planning, right? a lot of uh, sustainability planning. Uh, then you, you find for sources of funding, mm. right? Especially like today, MDDCs, right? So they, in, in, in Malaysia as, as a whole, right? Now, as compared to 20 years back, right? So the scenario has changed, right? Though for now, uh, we have all these entities, right? To help out all the startup, mm. right? I think this is a very good process, right? MTDC is one of them, Mosti, MDAC, Right. So these are few people that are, are, are helping. So it's just that for a staff like us, right, you have to know where to look for. Mm. That, of course, is crucial for, for, for um, uh, the business of Vipro Group as well. Yeah. Mr. Chu, you're in, uh, amongst others, automation, yes. it, which has become a bit of a buzzword now. Um, how has MTDC helped take Vipro from strength to strength? Okay, uh, we are the businessmen. We are always busy chasing <laughs> for the sales orders. We sometimes neglect whatever uh, the business strategies and also, uh, of course, another one is uh, what MTDC will do is a financial aid. So MTDC and is a, one of the government agency, they have a lot of uh, expertise in terms of uh, business network, in terms of uh, mentoring. So it's not just financing. They can see your weaknesses that we cannot see ourselves. We only look at the technology, but we don't know, oh, you have to wear smart, <laughs> <laughs> or you have to uh, go inside your accounts, finance, to see which area mm. is uh, getting you most profitable uh, margins. Otherwise, uh, you only focus on technology. I, I'm very proud of this technology, but this technology, you cannot make money. Yeah, so we need to balance. Mm. We need to balance. It's a chicken and egg uh, problems. We need to balance. So sometimes we have a technology. This technology, yeah, we keep it to ourselves, but some technology, we can just sell it hot cake. Then we can have the rice and bowl from there. So MTDC, they look at uh, our accounts and they do the due diligence, they know. Uh, uh, sometimes I don't know, I do a business for 15 years, they, within one month they can see, hey, this is your weakness. Mm -hmm. And areas of improvements. And you guys do look smart, I'll give, it, I'll give that to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Faisal, is, is your company now IR, uh, uh, I4.0 ready? Our company? Yes. Uh, I mean... We kind of knee deep in it. I mean, that's that's what we do. Mm. We make uh, uh, IoT devices. Mm. So, for us, we need our customers to be I four point already, yep. um, and the country to be the infrastructure in the country to be I four point already. Mm. For us, that's what we live and breathe in. It's it's like what I mean. It's like we swimming in it. Mm. Uh, very interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll return to Dave in a few moments. But but Chu, you because you're in automation. Yes. Um, the, the the challenge when it comes to automating, especially uh, 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 felt by SMEs in, in this country, talking about getting your customers to be I4.0 already. What's the challenge in getting SMEs particularly, which makes up almost 100% of total number of companies in Malaysia, to embrace automation and not be scared of it? Okay, one of the challenges of the SME is uh, ROI, mm. return of investment. If I invest this one, how much, uh, when I can get back my investment? Mm. So this is a challenging uh, area, but we managed to convince the SME in Malaysia that, look, you, when you invest this, it's not only just of the return of investment. You can increase your productivity and you can uh, reduce the reliance on the foreign workers. So just like your government policy, when they want to reduce the foreign workers, if you uh, heavily rely on foreign workers, then you are stuck in between right. if, let's say, they are, they are going back. Mm. So this is a challenge to the SME. They, they start looking at it. When they improve the productivity and they increase the efficiencies, the return part of it is chunk to the business. All right. Mr. Chu Chi Seng of Vpro Groups Number Hard, uh, Dave Chong of Linear, Linear DMS Number Hard, and of course, Faisal Ali from Grimax Holdings Number Hard. I'll return to them. The MTDC Technopreneur Coffee Chat takes a break. We'll return after this.
Welcome back. You're watching the MTDC Technopreneur Coffee Chat. Now, today's topic of discussion is I 4.0, uh, a concept that has um, invoked actually so many emotions. But today, we are unlocking the secret of how not to just survive I 4.0, because it's here anyway, but to thrive upon it. And that's where the Malaysian Technology Development Corporation, or MTDC, comes in. And with me are three real-life success stories uh, of MTDC's many, many programs and initiatives to push uh, Malaysia towards the digital age. Um, uh, welcome back, Mr. Faisal Ali of Grimax Holdings in Yen uh, Dave Chung of Linear DMS in Yen and Mr. Chu Chi Seng of V Pro Groups in Yen Now, Dave, you are, of course, as Faisal said, you guys are all knee deep in, in I 4.0. Um, but when you're talking about the key concepts of I 4.0, we're still struggling with the key concept digitalization, automation, and all those things. Perception is still somewhat negative here in Malaysia. For example, automation robots will take my jobs. Um, is perception still much of a problem for this country to fully embrace I 4.0 and digitalization? Yeah, I think talking about perceptions, uh, basically there's a coming from uh, the the pro or the con side. Yep. Right. So a lot of people have heard that uh, industrial 4.0 revolution is the uh, most destructive technologies right so it will take out jobs right to be automated right for example fintech right so we will be cashless community so the bank will, will, will get disrupted as well right but uh, there's a perception but actually it's happening right so that's why all the industries now are lingering whether how to adopt mm. that's why like you were saying there's a lot of uh, uh, cry fall saying that uh, a lot of uh, IO, uh, industry 4.0 will, 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 will come and disrupt, right? That's the real truth. That's why now even in, in Malaysia and around the world, people are struggling and looking at how we're going to adapt, right? So I'm going to echo the view of uh, Mr. Chu over mm. here just now talking about uh, SMEs coming into industries. They are more focusing on ROI. Right. Mm. Of course, our is very important. Mm. Yes. As with that, all companies, right? Yes, as all companies. Our is very important. But now the, the, the issue is that you are talking about your survival. Whether tomorrow, right, you are still, right, uh, relevant in the industries or not, mm. right? So besides just the ROI, that of course, for uh, ecosystems, right, like uh, 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 developers like us, so we have to build products. It's not just to just for uh, tech funds, right? Just uh, to, to, to use it for fun as well, right? So we have to build product with uh, a purpose, you know, that will include, uh, improve all the productivities, right? Mm. Uh, more secure kind of things, you know? So that will in relates back to the ROI, right? For, for, for the SMEs, mm. right? So you're talking about perception, yes, right? But you're talking about, is this real? It's real, real. Mm. It's very it's real. real. And you're saying that once, once these companies and this sector really provides meaningful growth for the population uh, as a whole and create value with their products or services, then the perception, the negative perception would, would subside. Yes. Right. Faisal, you, you, you were very much exposed to the, to the Silicon Valley culture. Uh, uh, because, of course, that's the ultimate holy grail that we aim for whenever we talk about I4.0 or Cyberjaya or you know, the digitalization of, of Malaysia, basically. Um, when you observe uh, the values, the, the approaches they take in how they deal and handle I4.0 in Silicon Valley, how does it differ with how we are doing things here? I, I don't know. I think they don't see it as a separate thing. I think they mm. just see it as normal part of improving your improving anything mm. you know they don't see it as a uh, I need to do for i 4.0 because it's the buzzword it's just that they need to do it because you always try to do something better and this is the next this is you know a lot of i 4.0 is just enable a lot of uh, companies to do things better uh, so I don't I don't I don't see them they don't like I don't know if grab even see themselves as a IOT company mm. but uh, that's what they are but that's the point, isn't it? It's, it's ingrained in their values that th right. this is something they, they have to deal with and they have to embrace. Like, like, like uh, uh, they've said just now, that it has to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah it's going to yeah, happen. <laughs> the, yeah, the attitude approaching it is important, isn't it? Uh, as important as the policies and the initiatives taken by the likes of MTDC. Right. Um, I think for, 
for, for us in Malaysia, um, if you want to take the lead in I4.0, then you know, we have to have the policies, the infrastructures, and the companies to implement it. Uh, otherwise, we'll just let someone else take the lead, and then we kind of pick up the crumbs. True, the policies, the infrastructures, oh. yes. is, are, are, are the optimum in Malaysia for us to fully embrace I4.0? Uh, <coughs> we, from Malaysia side, Malaysia point of view, before I4.0, there is a I2.0, mm -hmm. 2.5, mm -hmm. 3.0, but now it's progressed to 4.0, mm -hmm. where uh, all the digitalizations and automation is taking place. So, we are ready to it. We are ready to it. And uh, in fact, the Malaysia worker, you ask for the Malaysia workers, eh, who want to carry a hot, uh, hot environment, who want to work in the hot environment, who want to lifting the heavy stuff? They don't want. Mm. So the automation take into place, robots take into place to replace their tasks in this area. Whereas their normal tasks, they can upgrade themselves. The workers, they can upgrade themselves into the level that they're no longer into this area. So that's the point, isn't it? This is the, the, the issue or the concern or rather the fear that not just Malaysia has, but it's sweeping through the entire globe. Automation, people are afraid of the jobs that they will lose. But rather, what you mentioned is that it's not that it's not a zero-sum game. Robots will not cause loss of jobs, but actually cause, uh, enable humans to up their uh, level in the value chain and get better, higher paying jobs. Yes, this is uh, right. They will not lose the jobs, but they, the foreign workers will lose their job, but not Malaysian. The Malaysians Malaysian move on to better jobs. Yes, go for the better job and to upgrade their skill. All right. Okay. I'll return to you gentlemen uh, shortly. We'll, take, uh, we'll have to take a short break. The MTDC Technopreneur Coffee Chat resumes right after this. Welcome back to the MTDC Technopreneur Coffee Chat. Today, our topic of discussion is I4.0. And joining me today are three lovely gentlemen, uh, Faisal Ali of Grimax Holdings in Jan Berhad, Mr. Dave Chung of Linear DMS in Jan Berhad, and Mr. Chu Chi Seng of VPro Groups in Jan Berhad, all of whom are real-life examples of how MTDC has helped them to not just weather this I4.0 wave, but thrive upon it. Now, gentlemen, we left off at a very interesting point. Because it was mentioned uh, by one or more of you that the, the policies are there, it has to be improved, the infrastructures are there for I4.0 to truly, truly be embraced in Malaysia by all companies of all sizes and shapes. Um, but perhaps the most crucial component is the human capital. In whatever sector, you have to have the right people to, to ensure that you, you, you get the job done and you maximize on, on this wave. Um, now, uh, Dave, um, do you think the quality of the country's human capital is up to the mark that, that, that will enable us to fully maximize on I4.0? In actual fact, uh, you look at our uh, educational systems, all those, right? Uh, basically, we have all those uh, engineering courses, mm. right, provided, all those, right? So, you're talking about technologies, right? So, uh, basically, you're talking about the connectivities. Right, uh, using technologies like right? you have uh, Bluetooth, you have Zigbee, you have LoRa, all this. All these are actually uh, RF technologies, right? So the fundamentals that we have to focus on is the, the RF, right, in our education system. So we have to go back to the basic, mm. right, like electronics, right, engineering, uh, electrical, and communications, right? So if you are asking me that whether we are ready, actually, our infra for education uh, systems, right, uh, in our universities, they already provide this course, right? So basically, that how you're going to uh, embrace on that and then get more students to, to take up the engineering courses mm. of this, mm. right? So we, we do have a gap, frankly speaking, we do have a gap of talents mm. in terms of uh, engineering. Yeah, I, want to say uh, yeah gap? I think I don't think they have a gap when they graduate from universities. I think when you graduate from the U.S. or, or Malaysia, you are probably at the same level. Really? Yeah. Mm. I graduated from the U.S. and I, I, <laughs> I met, I mean, I meet uh, UTM kids there, you need 10 kids there, they're just same. as good as I was. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I was, you know, pleasantly surprised about that. I probably shouldn't be surprised, but they were, they're just at, uh, as good as I am. But the difference is after, what happened after you graduate? 
most of the things I learned, I didn't really learn in school. I learned while working. Mm -hmm. So I think the policies have to encourage more of that. I think the days of just you know four years of uh, uh, undergrad and then grad school and then you stop learning. I think, I think that, that that's over for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we just have to have policies to encourage that. After the formal learning, uh, they have to be that informal learning mm. uh, because uh, graduate they they're at the same level. Well, it, it does take years for the for universities to actually probably revise the curriculum and all those things. So, is it the reality that? that the current procedure of doing all that, revising the syllabus and all those things, are not, are not compatible with how fast the world is moving uh, anymore. Uh, to, to Dave's point, I think, um, you know, I don't think universities, at least what I can, as it exists today, yeah. uh, they can't, the curriculum can't change quick enough for the, um, for the industry. I think okay. the, the, the university should focus on the fundamentals so that when they leave the universities, they can learn the different technologies. Mm. For example, um, you know, whether it's LoRa or Sigfox, it doesn't matter as long as you understand you know, what happens, what, what engine trade-off are you making when you're transmitting at 900 megahertz versus 11 gigahertz. Mm. You know, so you don't care what technology comes, they, they're gonna come and change. But the fundamental has to be strong and then you have to, there's, there's gotta be something after that school. Mm. I, I don't know what that is, but it's, it's gotta the be school of hard missing. Knocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Shu, um, talking about, you know, of course, um, um, everyone has to play their part, and the government is probably uh, in need of playing the biggest part in enabling, whether in terms of creating the right ecosystem, the infrastructure, the policies, the curriculum, the syllabuses. What are you hoping in terms of um, measures that will be announced to strengthen the, the uh, technology space here in Malaysia? Okay, well, we have to start from the education, yeah? Mm. We have to start from the technical education for this, uh, especially on this I4.0, for the computer science and all this. We have to encourage uh, those people because I know a lot of graduate now, a lot of uh, undergraduate now, they choose not to study in engineering. They go for the commerce. Mm. Uh, they go for the business admin. But this will... Uh, deteriorate the I 4.0 improvement yeah mm -hmm. so uh, I will say the government encourage on this area encourage people to study technical all right okay. we have about a minute left so just to split between you guys 30 seconds and 30 seconds each we never have enough time apologize yeah. for that um, Dave basically in the government policies that I'm um, looking at is because uh, industrial 4.0 disruptive technology is real Right, so a lot of reskilling, right, Up, upgrade the uh, upgrade the value chain of our working adults, right. It's not just uh, for universities, but the working adults as well. So this kind of program that you have to have in place, mm. right, to embrace industry 4.0. Uh, I think for me, for Malaysia to take the lead on I 4.0, I think we have to have very low cost connectivity. Mm -hmm. Right, so for us, you know, uh, the telco, you know, they have that chicken and egg question where should I invest in this, you know, uh, NBIOT when there are no device makers? But, you know, something has to happen first because uh, the device makers, we're not going to make devices until they are. The network, the network not going to, so there has to be someone else that intervenes that incentivize for, you know, the telco to invest in the low connectivity cost because if you don't have the low connectivity cost, this IoT will be late. We'll be late to the game. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Faisal Ali of Gramax Holdings in Jan Berhad, Dave Chung of Linear DMS in Jan Berhad, and Chu Chi Seng of V Pro Group in Jan Berhad. Now, after talking to you guys, I'm, I'm quite confident that the country is in good hands with the help of MTDC in terms of weathering and thriving the I 4.0 wave. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. And you've been watching the MTDC Technopreneur Coffee Chat. Um, good day. I'm Lukman Haris. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. <laughs>